Hello and welcome back to my channel, Family Tech, where you get all the tech tips, news, and information to help you understand and manage the technology in your home. Today's guests, I'm so fun. It's so fun to have a guest like you with a creative <laughs> background because I have like zero creativity whatsoever. <laughs> um, so, so, and it's a really good topic. I think a lot of, especially moms, they're taking so many pictures on their phones and they just don't know how to make the pictures stand out, look good. You know, everyone wants good totally. pictures and not everybody knows how to do it, including myself. So, <laughs> that's why I bring the experts on. So uh, Rochelle, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do and all of that. I am Rochelle. I have been in the photography world for over 15 years. I don't like to count at this point how many years it's been. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I love it. I got hooked in high school as a photo assistant and I've been a professional photographer um, for like 12. So it's been a lot of fun for me. Um, you're cracking me up talking about creativity. I feel like creativity is a muscle. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't always classify myself as a like artistic or like super creative person, but I've noticed that the more that I do it, the more I get really rolling with it, you know? So I love helping moms, especially figure out how to be happy with their photos, whether it's the photos they're printing from their professional photographer or the photos that they're taking. And so I've really kind of been rolling with that for a couple of years. And that's been a lot of fun. That is fun. Um, and it just brings me back. You're talking about how many years you've been in stuff. And yes, totally understand. I am in the like ancient end of uh, Gen X here. But um, we like I can remember the days when I had my like camera with film and I took all my pictures with all my friends and everything and I'd have to wait until the whole roll was finished and then go take it to the photo place and wait for them to you know finish processing the photos ah! and then you get them back and you're like okay this one sucks this one sucks this one sucks this one sucks <laughs> yeah. so you have like one good picture in like a whole stack of photos I know I know but it. now we're so lucky because we can kind of tell that like right away but sometimes you're like losing the moment because like you're trying to get this great photo and and then you're like oh that really doesn't capture what I think was going on here so like what's a common mistake people are making when they are taking pictures with their phone which it's so great that we all have a little camera in our pocket at all times. <laughs> I know it's the best. I think the the number one thing that I always tell everybody is not to wait for the perfect moment. I have five kids and I love getting out and taking them to do things. And I always laugh a little bit inside when I see a mom at, you know, some fun place trying to take pictures of her kids going, okay, okay, now just hold on. Just hold, wait, stay, stay really still. And you know, they're counting to three. And by the time you get to three, everybody's messed up again right. and so my my number one thing is like turn on burst mode and just go for it like, and it's nice. great with digital photography is you can go in afterward and get rid of the bad ones right <laughs> and I think burst mode is i mean and i don't know because i i use an android device i know a lot of people use iphone but um with those burst mode all of those pictures kind of like contain themselves into like one picture and you can like go through really quick and like cancel out the crappy ones and, and just yeah. pick the ones. instead of like a whole, you know, like you're looking at your camera roll and all you see is like the same picture over and over again. I think that burst mode kind of condenses it. Is that right? Like, yeah, it does. It does. Which is super nice. And if you're, if you're not on burst mode and you're just clicking away, that works totally fine too. I know I'm not always great about it, but a, a good tip for clearing out all those bad ones is to just set aside a time once a week, like Sunday evening or something to go through and just clear everything out. And then it's not cluttering up your camera roll. That's actually a really, really, really good tip 
because like, you know, if you set aside that time every, every week, you know, you're already kind of just sitting around doing nothing anyway and just going through and like cleaning up, you know, cause I've got screenshots and I've got, you know, just random pictures of like something at the store, like, Hey, is this what you wanted? And things like that. And it can get really yeah. overwhelming to have so many pictures. So if you just take a few minutes every week and kind of clear out what's been happening for the week, you'll be way more on top of that. Exactly. Yeah. I love yeah. That. And then I think another mistake that I see a lot is, or like composition kinds of mistakes. It's harder with your phone. Like I know for me, even I pull out my phone cause I want to take a picture. I'm just like clicking, you know what I mean? Like I'm holding my phone, like a phone and mm -hmm. I'm just shooting, but it's not always, it doesn't always feel super intentional and that shows up in my composition. And so for like little kids shooting from above, just like where you're standing and they're, you know, two feet below you, right. that viewpoint misses the mark a little bit afterward. Oh, that totally makes sense. Um, and then for those of you who are in here, if you have any questions at all, please put them in the chat and we will definitely address those questions um, as we come to it. But um, so speaking of exactly what you're talking about, where you're kind of up here, your kid is up there. Are there special ways to take pictures with your phones that like people aren't aware about? And I'm going to give an example of this because I was blown away. This was just last weekend. I was out, I was in New York City with some friends and my friend holds her phone upside down and takes a picture of this building. And I was like, well, what are you doing? And she's like, see, because now the building looks like this instead of looking like this if you're taking it. And I'm like, oh, that's amazing. So like, what other tips do you have that are kind of like that? And like, and maybe you can explain what that was all about and everything too. Yeah, I totally just pulled out that trick a few weeks ago. We were on a trip to Universal Orlando with my husband's siblings and, you know, trying to get all the majesty in the background without a lot of space. And turning your phone upside down is awesome. I even do it with my little kids because it changes the perspective that you're shooting from. So flipping that camera upside down totally changes everything. And that is one of my favorite tricks for sure. Um, I think also, um, you can do like, a, a live photo and then on an iPhone, you can go in afterward and tap the live photo button and you can change it to long exposure, which is interesting. It, I mean, it doesn't change it as you're taking it, but you can see the change afterward. And so if you're like in lower lighting situations or you want some of those like trendy blur a little bit, um, it, it'll do that for you. Or if you have a really wiggly subject, um, a lot of- well, <laughs> Moms uh, have no that'll... idea what, that's ta what you're talking about here. <laughs> I know. And so you can, um, you can do that with your live photos and kind of select a frame or you can take a short video clip and select your picture that you really want afterwards with um with like a short video clip so those are those are fun um i love portrait mode a lot yeah. <laughs> it helps blur out some of that background noise oh sure and, okay. and then um and then uh, like on an iphone too um your volume buttons can also be shutter buttons if you're so like if you're holding your phone in a different position uh, you can click your volume buttons and it, it might be like that on android too um yeah android has actually a couple really cool things um there's one where you can just kind of move where the shutter button is um, okay on the photo or my favorite thing, well, I have two favorite things that I do with my Android because I have a note. So um, like the note, you, I have this little like stylus that comes with it. Oh, phone. yeah. And this, like you can, there's a button on the stylus that I can press to like trigger the shutter. Um, and then yeah. also I think on, well, and this is specific, I think to Samsung's, um, I can just put my hand up like this and then it'll count down and take a picture. Right? Oh yeah. So I yeah. like to use that one a lot too, where I'm just like, do, 
and then I see it trigger and then I can put my hand down and get the photo. But yeah, yeah so there's a lot of different like shutter options yeah. I think, on both devices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know like on headphones too, you can like push the volume button and that'll act as a remote. Yeah, so lots of cool, lots of cool ways to get that picture to be taken without like trying to. I know. Yeah, it's fun to play around with. I think that's like my big suggestion is play around with it before the moment of and right. kind of get comfortable with, with those little hacks that work the best for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so you touched on this just a little bit, but let's get into like, like I said, I am the worst with photography and all of this. So I might e not even be like saying the right words, but like, talk to me about composition. Like, so I'll take a photo and then somebody next to me will take the exact same photo, but theirs looks so much better. Why is that? And like, how can I match that? So I think the biggest thing um, is the rule of thirds. And I think a lot of us have like heard of it, but aren't familiar with it. Um, but a lot of the times on your phone camera, you can turn on your grid and it will section your view into nine squares. And so the rule of thirds basically says that like the human eye is more drawn to points to the points where those lines on your grid intersect so you've got four points and your image is more visually appealing if your subject is positioned along one of those lines or at the points and so if you turn your grid on it kind of gives you a better idea of what you're actually capturing but I've also found that one of the big things that I had to change when I first started doing photography was making sure that I was cropping, um, cropping out any like distractions before I took my picture. A um, lot of us don't want to spend, you know, a lot of us don't have an hour to edit each of these pictures right. after we take them and we're not photoshop magicians so right. we're not going to be erasing huge objects right. in the background <laughs> yeah. so you want to like pay attention like is there a trash can right behind the person you're taking a picture of you might not love that afterward or yeah. is there like a random branch like our eyes our brains mm. filter out a lot of these things when we're just in the moment but when you look at your picture afterward you're like oh there's like a branch sticking out of her head that doesn't look very good <laughs> so you just have to kind of train yourself a little bit to reposition things as you're taking the picture yeah as that reminds me i was just looking at my my friend's um facebook page and there's a picture of her and i think it was like easter and like there was a picture of her family like standing on the porch and she has something on her door and it looks like she's got bunny ears from like the the door and she was like no actually i did that on purpose <laughs> <But> <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, totally. you're like oh how funny it looks like you have funny ears she's like yeah i totally did that <laughs> i remember early on i was using one of my best friends was had agreed to be a model for me and i was taking a picture of her with her cute little family they just had one baby at the time and i found this really beautiful like stone kind of archway and I had them positioned in the archway. There was kind of like a shelf to it, you know? So they were kind of like leaning on this thing. And after I got home, I realized there was like a huge trash can right in front of this arch. And I had to edit it out of all of the pictures. And it took me way longer than it would have if I would have just been like, oh, there's a trash can in my picture. <laughs> let me move the trash can or let me move the people. <laughs> Yeah. So again, it's one of those things where you just really have to train yourself to notice it. <laughs> yeah. So like, just make sure you're not just focused on your subject, like look kind of around the subject and be like, oh, that's going to annoy me later. Um, totally. Get rid of it. Uh, also reminds me of a Seinfeld episode. Not sure if you're old enough, but um, 
<laughs> Seinfeld episode with George, yeah. like in the background on the beach. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, so what about lighting? So is it ever okay to use the flash? What sh like I've, you know, heard never, ever, ever use the flash, but is there times when you can, or what should I consider when I'm trying to light my phone? Yes. Yeah, I think I tell people a lot, like, just don't use your flash, just turn it off. Mostly because if it's not done intentionally, it can mess up your photos. If you have to go to the effort to turn your flash on, then you're more aware of the effect that it's having, right? So I feel like you definitely would prefer to have your flash on in a low lighting situation than have a photo that's too dark or too grainy that's not going to work. Yeah. But a lot of the time, you're, the built-in flash, whether it's the built-in flash on your professional camera or on your phone, is often too bright for the distance that you are to your subject. And so that's why you see off camera flashes being used more often because you can put a filter on them. So it's diffusing your light more evenly instead of just one bright spot right in the middle of your forehead. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> and I know that you can even buy off camera lights or flashes um, for your phone that'll just clip yeah. to the top of your phone and uh that is often the best choice but you can use you can kind of make shift a little bit of a filter um out of something as simple as like a ziploc bag that will help oh. diffuse your flash so like that's kind regular of regular ziploc bag yeah. tell me this trick this is so fascinating so the trick the the thing about using it with your phone is that the flash and the camera are like millimeters apart from each other so you've got to it it might end up getting over your lens you know you that's something you need to play around with but that can also be a fun photo effect if you if you play around with that before too but you yeah. using something um like a piece of parchment paper or a Ziploc sure. bag, what it does is it helps spread the light out across your subject instead of targeting it in one small point. Interesting. Well, thank you. you learn something new every day. I mean, this whole thing is going to be new information for me, but that one blew yeah. my mind. Um, <laughs> so if you do have lights like that, because I know a lot of people do like the ring lights, but um, special people like me have glasses and you can see, ah, oh, look, there's my ring light. So <laughs> what, <laughs> like, do you have any recommendations for like glasses or like how that can, you know what? Glasses are super tricky. I feel like there's not a super surefire way to avoid <laughs> the glare except getting, getting yourself at the right angle. Yeah. Like, you know, straight on is when it's going to be really <laughs> obvious yes totally but just angling yourself a little bit will help cut down on that <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. um and then like what about natural light because i mean you i would think because being the like photography idiot that i am that like if i'm just standing right in the sun it's gonna be like a fantastic picture but those pictures are the worst so like yeah what can we do in like natural settings to like make sure the lighting is a little better? Well, I think uh, just as a general statement, like like full sun, midday sun is is always going to be the worst um, <laughs> because it's so harsh and it creates yeah. a lot of shadows. And so even if you're not like standing under a tree that's creating a lot of shadows, yeah. <laughs> which you which is also something that you need I'm to all be careful with. Yeah, yeah, you've got like leaves on your face. <laughs> um, it creates shadows under your eyes. Or like if you have like heavier set brows, it's going to make your eyes look more sunken and your eyes dark because of the way the sun is hitting right on the high points of your face. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, totally. So, I mean, as a photographer, you know, we carry reflectors around to our photo shoots to help combat that yeah. um 
but if you, I mean, if you have somebody with you that can stand and kind of act as a shield um, <laughs> sure. or, or even as the person that's taking the photo, I've done that with my kids before. I've been like, okay, sit down. I'm going to just, okay. <laughs> I'm going to block you from the sun. Nice. Um, but having the sun behind you um, is, is really the best way to go either way, because then it's not, um, it's not making you squint as much. It's not right. on your face. So I just try and put the sun behind everybody as much as I can. <laughs> so my neighbor kid, who's the same age as my daughter, who is like six, eight, like, you know, 300 pounds, just bring him with me wherever I go. Exactly. And have him shield have the giant shield the sun. Okay. I have exactly. a new job. I have a new job for my neighbor. <laughs> just, just follow me around everywhere I go. That'd be great. <laughs> that kid's gonna end up in the NFL. He's great. Um so let's talk about we've talked about it briefly. Wiggly kids, pets, sports. How can we get the best photo for somebody who is not going to sit still? I mean, this one's, oh, did she leave? She left. But <laughs> Honestly, my dog was right here. But <laughs> I saw her. She yeah. was moving around. <laughs> um, yeah. So like I said before, don't wait. Like, just keep going and just keep snapping. Um, it just, you know, it depends on how much you want to sort through your pictures afterwards. Right. <laughs> but, but honestly, I what I've discovered is that like two and three year old kids are my favorite as a photographer because they're so uninhibited. And <laughs> I I prefer candid shots anyway of yeah. my own kids or of my clients. And so my thing is like, just let them go. Just let them do their thing. And I'm just gonna follow them around. If they wanna pick flowers and dance around, like I'm just gonna move with them, right? Like I'm just gonna keep following them around. Dogs are same thing, right? <laughs> they are like independent beings with their own ideas and trying to like harness them for too long at a time just always ends in misery. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing some photos for my sister's family and this was like 10 years ago, maybe more. And they had some little kids at the time and they didn't want to sit still. And my brother-in-law was like, you guys, like you need to sit down. And you know, he was getting so frustrated. And then the kids were like, you know, stressed out and starting and then nobody would smile because they didn't know what they were supposed to do. And I was like, it's okay. So the way I structure my photo sessions is we start with some pose stuff while their attention is captivated. Right. And then I let them roam and follow them around while they're roaming. Yeah. And then we can come back and maybe do some pose stuff later after that. But I feel like the best method is to not try to physically control them too much you know <laughs> yeah that totally makes sense and those are actually like way better shots i feel like anyway because like nobody wants the you yeah. know every <laughs> like they're so boring and like these candid shots like are, have so much more personality i feel like where yeah. like oh that's like that's totally her or you know that's totally the dog that's exactly the kind of like face they would make. Yeah. And I mean, really the reason that we're even taking the picture is because we want to remember this, right? Like we want to remember this time and this moment and how things were, because even if the picture is like perfect, yeah. you're going to remember what was happening before and after the perfect. <laughs> so I, I just prefer to have it be a more accurate representation one of my favorite pictures that I've ever, well, two of my favorite pictures that I've ever taken, I took with my phone when my two oldest were toddlers. And one of them is my three-year-old son in a Buzz Lightyear costume, jumping from his toy bin onto a chair, like yeah. arms outstretched, you know what I mean? And 
he didn't even know I was there, but I just, he, it was his like favorite trick, his new trick that he had just learned. And, and so I love that. I, I love that. I just got that freedom captured, yeah. you know? So that actually makes me think of two questions that I haven't sent you before. So this kind of always happens with me. So I apologize. <laughs> but the first one is how, like when I run into those moments where I'm like, oh my gosh, they're doing the cutest thing ever. By the time I get my phone, open up the camera, like the moment is completely gone. Like how can you be more present to like capture those exact moments? It's so hard, honestly. Yeah. I I feel like sometimes it's something like with with little kids. I mean, even with slightly older kids, like they've learned something new or they're super into one thing, you know, that they're kind of fixated on. And a lot of times it'll happen over again, right? So sure. like yeah. I just I try if I like missed it, I try to like plan ahead you know like for the future yeah. i try to anticipate it and have my camera ready sometimes i'm like okay wait 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 hold that thought just hold that thought for 30 seconds yeah. okay okay go ahead unfreeze got it or yeah or like oh my gosh that was the best thing can you try that one more time or show me your trick one more time right sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't <laughs> but i feel like in my effort to try to capture it sometimes i make it too forced sure. so if i have them do it again i try to like not let them know that i'm trying to get it on video or on camera right. you know i say it in a way of like oh that was so cool can you try that again yeah <laughs> that's a good one instead of like oh wait let me get a picture of that yeah then it seems like really forced yeah by the time they're really communicative they're often more aware that there's a camera. I mean, even my two-year-olds kind of knows when I pull out the camera. Yeah. So I have to try and be a little bit sneaky about it. <laughs> For sure. Well, and then I, I know that this is something I use all the time, but like you can set up like a quick button on both Android and iOS. So like if I am like just looking at my phone, I can just double, like I can double tap my thing and it yeah. opens up my camera. So like there's That's some true. things you can do to like make it super quick to open up the camera. But again, yeah. like I, I love your like, oh, hey, that was awesome. Can you try it again? <laughs> like I like that sneaky, like instead of like, oh, hey, that was awesome. I want to get a picture of it. Yeah, but I definitely do have my camera on my lock screen. That is that is huge. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and then the other question I thought of uh, as we were talking about kind of like family pictures. So, you know, when I was younger, everything was all like matchy matchy. And now we've gone kind of like where you've got like a color scheme happening. Like, what do you think about like, like stylistically, like how, yeah. can, like for someone like me, I don't know what we should do, you know? <laughs> Like, yeah. I don't know what colors are. <laughs> Ask me a technology question. I got your back, but I don't know how to like matchy match. So like, give us some advice yeah. here. Styles change a ton over the years. Yeah. I mean, they just, I mean, 10 years ago, it was like Chevron and like bright, bright colors. Teal was in and, and it's changed a lot since then. Yeah. But even when I was um, like a photo assistant in Connecticut, the style was way different. It was very like matchy, like everybody is wearing the same color shirt, right? And it's like, right. so it, it has changed a lot. I think um, the best way to keep it timeless is to stick with neutrals. That's just my own personal preference. Sure, yeah, um, for sure. Even, um, even jeans get dated, out, like, you know, so I think um, also like shopping at a place that tends to be a little bit more timeless helps, right? Like uh, shopping- Don't go to like you Forever know. 21 or whatever, yeah. like <laughs> yeah. super like, trendy I places. Would, yeah, I would steer away from some of those like super trendy choices like leopard print or like floral <laughs> pants. Um, 
unless that's really what you're going for. If you really do your pictures like religiously every single year, you know, it, it's kind of fun to see how things change. Sure. I love, you know, I, I recommend, you know, baseline picking a color palette that works. You can have, you know, five or six colors in your color palette um, as long as they're, you know, complementary um, and they're not. So explain stepping. that to to people who are <laughs> color idiots like myself. <laughs> um, I I think the biggest color suggestion is to steer away from super bright colors or neon colors. Um, yeah. If it's super bright, it's going to clash with most things, basically. Yeah. Um, but choosing, um, you know, like slightly more muted tones is, you know, those colors are, if they're, if they're the same tone, they're pretty much going to go together. You're not yeah. going to go wrong as long as you're staying, um, in the same color wheel. So, you know, I would, I would not do, you know, like deep, deep colors with pastels. Yeah. Meet, meet in the middle somewhere. Sure. Um, I gotcha. but it's also a good idea to mix uh, different textures um, and patterns too, just uh, to keep the interest. So yeah, if you're, if you're sticking with like, like tans and whites or like white and black and you know, you're, you're kind of mixing um, those neutral colors, definitely add in layers and textures uh, to your clothes so that it doesn't just feel flat. So like a corduroy pants instead of like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Or like a gauze top instead of just cotton. Sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Thank you for the fashion advice. I'm like, <laughs> like now I might need to find an actual like fashion expert for a whole fashion episode maybe, but I'm like, I don't know how to <laughs> tie that into technology. So who knows? Um, but I say I have a bunch of pictures on my phone I have not followed any of the suggestions that you have given us because I have just learned these things. Um, how can I improve some of the photos that I've already taken on my phone? I love a lot of the photoing, photo editing apps that they have out there. There are a lot of really great ones. Uh, the one that I use is Lightroom, but that one is pretty limited unless you have the subscription already. And um, as far as free apps go, there's like uh, Visco or Snapseed. There are a lot of really good ones that offer more control. Even just in your in your camera roll, there are some good things that that they have now to adjust your brightness or your exposure. I my big suggestion would be don't get too crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's going to really alter the quality of your photo. If you're planning to do anything with it besides have it on your phone, uh, be careful how much you edit it because, um, the difference between taking a professional raw photo, which is the type of file that it is and editing that in a program and, and taking a photo on your camera is is there's a big gap there. So sure. um, don't get too crazy trying to <laughs> brighten it up. Um, and then and then filters too. Uh, filters change the quality a lot. It, basically, a filter is a mask that you're putting on top mm -hmm. of your picture. So if you're mm -hmm. layering filter over filter, yeah. um, <laughs> if you're really gonna start um, reducing the, the quality of your photo. Very good tips. Um, so speaking of that, like if it's going to reduce the quality, what are some of the things we can do with our photos? You know, I have all of these photos and they just live here and they never go anywhere. Like, what should I do with my photos to, to, so I can, I enjoy am huge on that. Yeah. I'm huge on printing your photos. Um, enjoy them. You know what I mean? Enjoy them yeah. now instead of 10 years from now when you randomly stumble across it uh, on your computer or whatever um i i always back up my photos to start with 
I love using like Google photo or Amazon photo that just automatically syncs to your camera roll and backs it up. Um, yes. But I also love chat books. Um, I think it was just the most brilliant idea anyone's ever had. And I <laughs> know Nate and Vanessa Quigley and I think they're fantastic. And so I am a huge supporter of chat books. It's yeah. so nice to just, have a subscription that syncs to your Instagram, or they even do the month book subscription now that um, that works with your camera roll. And so, if if you are going through and editing every week, um, having it <laughs> synced works. Otherwise, you need to upload them yourself. But yeah. my kids love looking at our chat books and they're like, Oh, I forgot about that. Or remember how silly that was, you know, and it's so fun. I just keep them out, you know, they're cute yeah. to display and they're just fun to look back on. So that I think is really the like easiest brainless way <laughs> to, to do something with your pictures that you can enjoy. Yeah. And you know, kids, so respond to those things. Like, it's so crazy how you can be like, you know, my, my kids could be like playing video games, totally wrapped up in their own world. And like, and I'll start like looking through like a chat book or something like that. And like, they just like, you know, yeah. and they come over and they want to see that. They want to relive those memories. Um, and they And they just love that. So I totally yeah. agree. We do special ones for vacations that we take or, and yeah. I don't do, I wish I did. I'm just not on top of it enough, but I know a lot of people do the yearbooks, like a family yeah. yearbook with highlights from the course of the year. So that is also a, a really fun option. Yeah. My sister does that. She doesn't do it through chat books. She does that through Shutterfly, I think. And she's done it for, you know, as long as I can remember, you know, as long as it's been a thing with Shutterfly, yeah. where she just makes a book every single year of like everything they've done that year. And same thing, like her kids are grown, some are married, they'll still like pull out books from, you know, 10 years ago and, and look through it and relive that. And it's just so much fun. Yeah. We also gave my parents a digital picture frame. They have some really great ones now that connect to apps right on your phone. Yes. And my parents have loved that because even though we don't all live in the same state, we can just upload pictures through the app that pop up on their digital picture frame that they have on their kitchen desk. And, you know, that is a free way, basically, after you buy the frame, you don't have to keep paying for it. So, you, right, just, right. you know, so that's really fun, too, to kind of see what pops up. Yeah. And actually, so my recommendation, I've tried the digital picture frames and I, I agree, they're great and everything. But for my mom and for my mother-in-law, I actually ended up getting them a Google Nest and yeah. sync a Nest um, photo out, like a Google photo album to their Nest. And so like my siblings and all, we all just add pictures to this particular photo album yeah. And like, like all my photos are already in Google photos because I'm an Android person. And so it's so easy. I could just select, Hey, this one, this one, this one, move it to that album. And like, yeah. and I'm done. And it's on my, you know, my mom's and my mother-in-law's, um, Google yeah. nest devices just right away. And then they can also use the nest device, you know, to, do recipes and, and ask Perfect. Google questions and stuff like that. So I love using a Google nest as basically a digital picture frame. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And I know, before. um, like Amazon, um, like an echo the show echo. does yep. the same. Yeah. 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 So perfect. Yeah. I love that. Like, and that was, that was the gift I gave for Christmas one year. I'm like, everyone's getting a nest and that's, and we're going with that. So is there anything else that we've missed here with uh, photography? Anything that you else else you want to mention? Um, you know, talking about printing your photos, I just want to put in a plug for printing it at the right place. Um, oh, yeah. I, I don't think you need to spend a fortune on it. Um, but 
when you um, when you print your photos um, at somewhere like Walmart or Amazon or um, Costco, it, you're getting a little bit different quality. So like for school projects or, you know, for just like a quick like snapshot that I've taken that I need to use for something, I think those options are so great. Um, but as a photographer, you know, I offer digital downloads and I've done, you know, things for family and just give them the digitals or whatever. And they print them big to put on their wall at somewhere like Costco. And then they get it back and they're like, why does this look so green? And, yeah. and so I always make sure to tell all of my clients, if you're going to print these on your own, make sure that you're printing them, you know, at a, a good quality photo printer. My favorite one to recommend is MPix. Um, it's the consumer arm of the professional lab that I love. Um, what can you M spell that for me, really quick? M P I X. Oh, okay. And so they have, you know, the same types of um, products that you would find at like Shutterfly or something, but they're a professional printer. And so their printers are calibrated differently. And so that's how you reduce a lot of the weird color issues that you sometimes find with, um, with some of those one hour printing services that I used to live on when I was a teenager. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> so Ampix, is this an online thing where I upload the mm -hmm. photo to their website and then they send it to me? Or is there yeah. like a brick and mortar anywhere or anything? Uh, I think it's just online. Just online. And it, does, it works just like, like Shutterfly uh, pretty much. Um, I think sure. their pricing is super competitive, just really spot on. And they just, they have a ton of products that they offer and it's super easy to use. Their shipping is really fast. And yes. so, I mean, that's, that's my big thing. If I'm going to order this, I want it yeah. fast. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> that's so. awesome. That's really good to know. Cause yeah, I would do the same thing. I was like, oh yeah, like a, a photo print is a photo print. Like I don't, it doesn't matter if I'm at Costco or Walgreens or whatever, but that's super good information. Yeah. So, I mean, if you, especially if it's, you know, a professional photo that you paid for, right. you really want to make sure that that quality comes through if you're displaying it in your home. So, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Where, where can people find you? I know you share some really great um, photography tips. Yeah. On Instagram, I'm Packard.house. Um, and then my website is rochellepackard.com. So my website is where you'll find all of my professional photography. And I do like to share some of that on Instagram too. My Instagram is not just my work. It's a lot of, I share a lot of uh, family styling ideas with color palette options and um, shoppable mood boards, as well as photo tips for moms for all of these uh, fun camera hacks and things like that. So very cool. So when I do need that fashion advice, I can come to your Instagram yeah. handle and figure out what we should wear for our family pictures coming. Exactly. Come pick out a color palette and get some ideas. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Such fascinating information, especially for somebody who like, you know, I just like click, click, click. I don't know what I'm doing. And, you know, like I said, I could take a picture and somebody could take a picture standing right next to me and mine's terrible and theirs is great. So, well, thank you. It's my yeah. favorite thing to talk about. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, thank you guys all for coming. Um, I don't see any questions. We did just get a hello. So, <laughs> there, <laughs> there was that. But thank you so much. And we will see you next week. Bye.